stories. We're always telling stories. We're telling stories to other people, we're telling stories to ourselves, and even more than telling a story, we live in one big story. And of course, it's first of all, first and foremost, the story of our lives. We are the main actors in this story, but everything around us is a story. Every discussion we have with someone, it's a story. The way I look is a story. The way I talk is another aspect of my story. You know these people that you meet and they describe to you what they ate last night and by the time they're finished, you're so hungry and you want to go to the same restaurant because they knew how to tell that story. And there are other people that had such a great experience, but it was so boring. So telling a story is very important. I can say that people who succeeded in life are people who knew how to tell their stories. So it's all about telling a good story and today on social media you can see so many people trying to tell their stories. Here I am, check me out, this is me and my friend, I'm eating right now, yeah this is my story, I'm having a good time. And of course we comment and we share our thoughts, so we're so occupied in telling our stories. That's on a personal level of course, but if we take it a step higher, we're also surrounded by stories of big companies that are trying to sell us certain products. So they're telling us a story about that product. And they'll connect this product to many things in our lives that are important to us, like health and raising up our children. They will tell us that story in order to make us buy this product. So if once commercials were 15 seconds long and you saw the product and its name right away today, there's a whole story behind it. And no, we'll produce a three minute video with hundreds of thousands of dollars invested in it and you won't even know what it's about until the end, until the last three seconds where they told you, okay, so now this whole story was just to get you or to allow you to put in your mind that our product is the best thing that could ever happen to you. Stories. But stories can not only be told by people or by companies, Stories could be told and are being told by countries. Countries today are very, very occupied in telling their stories and promoting their image because we live in such a small globalized world that if you have a good story, you can promote the interests of your country. If it's security wise, if it's politically, and if it's economically, telling your country's story is very important today, especially if somebody else tells the story about you which is tainted with a lot of lies and misconceptions. So I want to tell you my personal story and how it aligns with the storytelling of my country, Israel. Three years ago, I found myself sitting in my working room and filling in the forms in order to enter for the first time the virtual world of the social media. I wanted to open my first Facebook page ever. You have to understand that opening a Facebook for me at that period of time was a very, very courageous thing to do. I until then, for the 15 years previous to that, I was what, what is called Hilltop Youth. I, I did not care about anything that happened in the outer and the external world. I did not know nothing about politics. I was sort of a shepherd and I had all the time in the world, what we lack today so much. I had all the time in the world and I was just wanted to disconnect from the city and the urban life that I grew in. It's a long story. Let's start from me filling the forms on Facebook page. So I filled everything up and submitted and here I am. I'm inside the virtual world of the social media. After entering this virtual world, the first thing I did was just to stare from the side, to look, to read, to try to understand how it works, to read comments, to understand what people think, what is happening here. It was my first experience and I needed to learn how it works. And after a few months, I was exposed to many things that some of them had a lot of influence on me, on my opinion, on my thoughts, and they were part of the big change that I have done, personally done in the last three years. I was exposed, first of all, to the fact that Israel was singled out and that was facing a very well orchestrated onslaught and attack on its legitimacy. And, and I was stunned. 
I was stunned. I, I didn't know how big it was. I was stunned. I didn't even know that there were so many Jews participating in this onslaught against Israel. I didn't know that Jews were taking the lead in this onslaught against Israel. I was exposed to human right organizations here in Israel and all around the world and their devious actions and their lies and, and their audacity. I was also exposed to millions of Christians that are ardent supporters of Israel, something that was so far away from me until then. People that would do anything for the state of Israel and we should embrace this connection. I was also uh, exposed to the fact that we have power today. We the people, the, the simple people, we have power today. Social media is a very, very strong platform for us to change reality. And this wasn't like that before. Before it was up to the mainstream media, whatever he said was holy and, and it fed us with a spoon and we ate everything that they gave us and, and the times have changed. We have power today. The small person that can share, that can write a comment, that is there to raise up his voice, he has, he has a lot of strength. And this is something that I was aware only when I entered this platform. I was also aware of 16-year-olds that use their smartphones to film themselves in their bedroom and make videos that reach millions of people. And millions of people listen to them, and millions of people appreciate them, and, and they make tons of money out of it. Social media, ladies and gentlemen. So I started dreaming. I dreamt of a, of a situation where something happened. We could simultaneously and online refute that lie within hours. I mean, today, it takes us a week in order to refute a lie that is said against Israel. We can't play like this. We are playing in the game of relevancy. We have to be relevant. So I dreamt of a situation that if something happened, we could be relevant, we can create a viral video within hours. If the state of Israel um, released a new law and people do not understand what this law is about, we can explain it within a few hours before all the lies against Israel are packed up. So many things that we have to be relevant today in social media. I also dreamt of a platform for people like me. People that want and have many things to give to Israel's PR front, to this war. People that can stand in front of the camera. People that can write text. People that can disseminate. People that can talk to other people on, on social media. They need a platform. There are so many people around the world that want to be part of this. And they don't have a home. So I dreamt of maybe building a home for them. I also dreamt of the attitude. It's about time we stop apologizing. We have nothing to apologize about. We have flaws, we have disadvantages like any other country in the world. But we have so many advantages. We have nothing to ask forgiveness and from no one. We should be proud of who we are and we should single out those liars and make them go on the defensive. I dreamt of that situation. I also dreamt of videos in Arabic. Ladies and gentlemen, we live in a surrounding with hundreds of millions of people talking Arabic. Nobody is talking to them in their language. We talk to one another in English or in Hebrew. We need to talk to them in their language. I dream of that as well. I dream of a time when we can talk to our neighbors in their language, sometimes put a mirror in front of their face, and sometimes Say a good word. So I gathered up all my dreams and all my insights. And uh, about a year ago, I opened an organization called Boomerang Fighting for Israel because we are fighting for Israel. We are fighting for the security of our kids, of my children. I'm fighting for the security of my people. And this is a war going on. And this is your opportunity. If you think you have anything to give, to be part, then you're more than welcome to be part of our dream and take it a step further. And together, Be'ezrat Hashem, we will reach a time when peace and tranquility will come to Israel, to this region, and to the whole world. Thank you.